Hey everyone, and welcome to this beginner's friendly guide on the Mistwoods update for Dota 2. This guide is the first in a multi-part series designed to help new and returning players have a firm understanding of what has changed in Dota 2 thanks to the Mistwood update. Now, this is a first in a multi-part series, so today we're talking about an overall overview of the general changes to kind of give you a snapshot as to what has changed in the game so you can be prepared as you jump into matches. We'll also be doing a uh, hero specific breakdown in a future episode, as well as item specific breakdowns as well, so keep an eye out for those. Now, the first major change in the Mistwood update is... Hoodwink! Hoodwink, this little squirrel rogue wind ranger thing, is a range nuker and disabler, and she's got a whole bunch of interesting abilities, starting with the sharpshooter ability. This is the ultimate. It's basically like a skill shot version of, uh, you know, the ultimate from Sniper. And uh, did I mention that, uh, you know, Hoodwink's pretty interesting because Hoodwink's kind of a mix between Meepo, Sniper, and Wind Ranger. And, uh, oh, and Witch Doctor because Acorn Shot is essentially like a paralyzing coconut. I say coconut, it's paralyzing cask, but it's basically like Witch Doctor's paralyzing cask in, in the sense that it kind of bounces around, does some damage, slows some enemies. It's a pretty interesting ability, and it also can summon a tree. Why is it important that it summons a tree? Well, because it kind of really, like right here, it's, uh, oh, they're not going to show the tree summon. Show the tree summon. Show the tree summon. Ah, damn you. Oh, there it is. Now, the reason why the tree summon's important is because it actually kind of goes great with Bushwhack, uh, the secondary ability, which basically is like Wind Ranger's Shackle Shot and Meepo's Net. And what it does is it kind of entangles uh, opposing uh, heroes amongst trees. But hey, if you do your acorn, put the tree down and then Bushwhack, well, then you get the little combo there, which is pretty cool. Then we have Scurry, which is basically like Wind Run, and it allows you to kind of evade attacks, run through trees and be elusive, which is pretty awesome. And you know what, I like it because it, it's really fitting for this hero. The hero has a lot of movement capabilities, very mobile, and again, this skill shot's pretty interesting as well. It's going to be a highlight reel ability, that's for sure. Hoodwink is kind of overtuned right now, has already been nerfed a couple times since the release of the update, believe it or not. But overall, still a very fun hero. Looking forward to see how they shape up in the meta. I've been, I'm seeing uh, Hoodwink uh, played as position 4, position 3. I've seen her being played as a mid. Um, so we'll have to see how, uh, you know, Hoodwink actually affects the current meta. Now, now, the biggest thing about the Mistwoods update, arguably, uh, a lot of people see the hero, but arguably is the Aghanim's shards. The Aghanim's shards are extremely important to understand because they are a major change to how Dota 2 functionally works. So now all heroes have a new ability called an Aghanim's shard ability. So basically, which, uh, so the UI has changed slightly. So you have your usual uh, UI here. You have your abilities. And you'll notice that right here, if you hover over these, this little area to the right of the ultimate ability, you actually have the opportunity to see on the UI for each hero whether or not they have the Aghanim Scepter unlock and the Aghanim's shard. And this is actually pretty fantastic because now it actually provides an interesting opportunity for heroes to have a wider variety of skills. And here it's showing Clockwork's Jetpack ability, which is probably one of the worst ones, actually, from my first initial impressions. But basically, for 1400 gold at 20 minutes, so at the 20 minute mark, you can spend 1400 gold and unlock this ability. The nice thing about this ability as well is it does not require any backpack space. So if you're six slotted and you have all the items you want and you get 1400 gold, you got your buyback and you want to just improve the uh, the power of your hero, even if you don't necessarily use your Agnum Shard that much, you can just basically spend the money, get the Agnum Shard. It doesn't take up any space in your backpack and you have some additional strength for the hero. This is a very significant change. Each hero in the game has received the Agnum Shard bonus. They're going to be balanced over time I'm sure it's a very significant change to Dota uh, but uh, overall it's a very exciting thing as well because basically it's a uh, it's a new uh, ability to unlock and play with now with regards to hero changes what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to cut you through to a few significant changes that you need to know about that affect the lower MMR and the unranked beginners matches that uh, you know you need to know about because uh, these are significant changes that have impacted the meta greatly all right so as I said we're gonna be focusing on several heroes that you're very likely to see at the lower MMR brackets for new and beginning players. So let's first talk about the Anti-Mage. Essentially what happened here is Anti-Mage has had their Scepter reworked, so they create a Blink uh, Fragment, which is pretty neat. But overall, Anti-Mage has received a bit of a toning down. Uh, the farm speed of Anti-Mage has been adjusted slightly. Um, he has uh, received kind of 
you know, the ability for him to blink around through different camps and kind of be highly mobile has been somewhat uh, toned back. It's not an incredibly large impact on him. He's still going to be a farming centric hero. Uh, but uh, the nice thing about the Aghanim Shard ability, it actually creates a situation where perhaps he can be a little more valuable in uh, team fight scenarios uh, because uh, with the uh, the counter spell ability, he's going to be able to create illusions that can have an impact on the fight because Andy Mage is a very farm centric hero as opposed to someone like Faceless Void who is a fight centric hero so it's very important that you understand that anti-mage needs to you know kill creeps go through the neutral camps and get get really strong before he can really start engaging in team fights whereas you know chronos fear from uh from faceless void is a is basically a game winner from from level six right a fight winner i should say so Andy Mage, slightly reworked, um, a little toned, uh, toned back, so a little bit, uh, you know, a little weaker than he was pre-patch, but still a very formidable foe. All right, and the next hero that we're going to talk about is Axe. Now, Axe has seen some uh, some changes here that make him much more significant in the meta. Um, Axe was not being used very frequently. Yes, of course, his Berserker's Call was valuable, but now this, especially with the Scepter rework, becomes a very interesting proposition. Axe also benefits from uh, some of the items that we'll talk about later in a future episode. Now, here's what we need to really understand. The Scepter rework is very significant here. The reason why it's significant is because Battle Hunger is not only a effective damage dealing ability, but now it also reduces enemy armor by seven and grants Axe additional armor per hero affected or per target affected I should say and it also lowers the cooldown of Berserker's Call. This is really relevant because if he Berserker's Call into a large group of enemies not only is he reducing their armor but he's going to be increasing his survivability by increasing his armor itself. So this is actually a fantastic rework. It makes the initiation of Axe that much more deadly and uh, quite frankly it's a really needed upgrade to a classic hero in Dota 2 that has fallen off the meta and his shard ability the counter helix basically allows him to get additional attack speed and also provide the opportunity to proc his counter helix on attack. Now this is a good ability, I'd like to see it in action, um, but uh, realistically I think that the Scepter rework here is much more significant for Axe, considering that, um, you know, he's often an, initi he's an initiating uh, hero, um, he's not often actually known for his physical attacking ability, but you know, with the counter helix, if, uh, if he's attacking anyway, you may, as well, you may as well proc it, why not? But I think that the Scepter rework provides Axe a lot of initiation opportunities and a new place in this meta. Bloodseeker has seen some uh, some major reworks here. Um, nothing too crazy, but essentially an increase in uh, single target damage capabilities with uh, Blood Rage being improved, especially with his Agnum's Shard ability. Uh, the other major change here is that uh, he might be slightly easier to lane against because Blood Rage itself has had a damage reduction, particularly at the, the higher end there. But also the major thing is that the mana cost goes up 20 at, uh, at level 1 and has an increased uh, cooldown. So that is going to make it uh, less susceptible to being spammed in lane which is very effective at zoning uh, so uh, Bloodseeker this is pretty interesting because uh, Bloodseeker is very common in both mid safe and off lane he's one of those heroes that uh, is very versatile and um, from a lot of standpoints here this might make him I need to test it but it makes him a very interesting uh, uh, mid contender especially with uh, with Rupture and uh, the way Blood Rage has been retooled but it prevents uh, him from zoning as effectively with Blood, uh, Blood Rite being uh, kind of uh, nerfed in some ways. So uh, Bloodseeker in an interesting spot here. Uh, testing will have to show whether he's stronger or weaker. It's just, he's been retooled, I think. So uh, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, Bloodseeker testing in the near future. Still a very interesting hero, but one that might be slightly easier to lean against now post-patch. All right, Bounty Hunter seeing some changes as well. The major thing about Bounty Hunter here is that his movement speed has been increased. Some minor changes to his base intelligence, which is great. Uh, but the major thing is that his Shadow Walk slow impact has been increased and his tracking radius speed has been increase as well and this goes perfectly with his Agnum's shard ability which allows him to uh, to gain uh, his allies to gain 50% of the track speed bonus and most importantly provide 800 vision around the target for the team this is extremely valuable and it's actually kind of you know it, it creates an interesting situation some of these Agnum shards are going to do this where now bounty hunter finds himself carving a niche in the support market where he is basically legitimately a formidable scout. Uh, with track and the Agnum Shard ability, he can be used to legitimately scout and uh, create opportunities to uh, for your team to create uh, to set up ganks and to basically catch the opposing team unaware. So he, uh, so I, I like this Agnum Shard design because it really cements him in a niche category as an effective scout. So let's uh, let's look forward to playing some bounty hunter 
upcoming. All right, so our boy Bristleback getting some buffs as well. A very beginner friendly uh, offlaner. Uh, the, so the Warpath bonus, so the bonus damage he gets from casting spells from his ultimate has been increased. Straight up buff. Uh, you're also getting, uh, you know, the Nasal Goose Scepter ability now increases max stacks. So if you get the Scepter ability, uh, you are getting uh, increased amount of goose stacks you can be applying. So reducing armor and movement speed. And the Radius has been increased as well. So it becomes not just a single target, but a area of effect ability. And of course, um, you don't because you don't need the talent for the max goose stacks because you have it on the scepter. You gain additional attack speed for carry potential later in the game because Bristleback is a very durable offlaner, but can trans transition into a very formidable carry given the farm. His Agnum Shard ability is actually pretty cool. Uh, he basically coughs, he coughs up a fur ball, and uh, the hairball balances towards the target location, hitting people with two quill sprays and goo. Which uh, obviously it uh, the Agnum's uh, Shard and the Agnum Scepter combo very well together because now you're creating this AOE effect of gooing and gooing everybody, slowing them down, reducing their armor, and then hitting them with quills. So uh, really interesting effect. I really like Bristleback here. He's seeing some interesting buffs. So if you're new to the game and you want to play with a very durable beginner friendly hero bristleback's your guy um and he's received some uh, very significant updates all right now we're going to talk about two heroes here centaur war runner and chaos knight uh so both are very uh, relatively beginner friendly heroes uh centaur war runner being a uh off laner chaos knight can be played in the off lane as well but is often seen in the safe lane as well but centaur war runner has been uh, retooled ever so slightly so basically the stampede duration has been changed that is his ultimate so he actually gets a little bit less of effect earlier on it's just been retooled a bit an extra half a second at uh at level three which allows him to have a little more stay staying power at the late game but also a significant damage increase based on strength so that is is a straight up buff so yes you're getting slightly less dur uh, duration but you are getting a significant increase in damage especially at level six so uh, centaur war runner might have a greater impact on the game the double edge getting an upgrade so it's not a new ability it's a modification to an existing ability basically increasing uh the amount of strength you have by 50% per hero hit over 15 seconds, refreshing uh, up to five stacks. So as you can see, every time he doubles edges uh, with the Agnum Shard, he gains a counter on his head, which is increasing his strength by 15%. So suddenly he's getting tankier, stronger, hitting for even more damage. So very interesting. In fact, uh, Chaos Knight, again, uh, someone who you are seeing in both off lane and safe lane, uh, no modifications to his actual stats or abilities, but rather the Agnum Shard ability being added, Chaos Bolt, creates an illusion attacking the target for the duration of the stun it's important you understand that that attack is dependent on the stun which is random within a certain threshold that's how chaos bolt works it does a random amount of damage between two uh um, two values and it also does a random stun duration between two values so chaos bolts a lot of fun here and it's getting an upgrade with an illusion so it's uh chaos knight's probably the most beginner friendly um illusion hero to play um you know has a lot of uh you know interesting capabilities but is also not as complex as say you know like a, uh, a naga siren or a terra blade so if you want to play with if you're a good micromanager and you're learning the game and you want to you know handle a few illusions then chaos knight is a good choice for you clinks seeing some uh some retooling here and while this doesn't seem significant the base mana reduction here does impact him quite a bit it prevents him from uh, from spamming his abilities in lane and makes him slightly weaker in the laning phases of the game uh, also level level uh, talent uh, level 10 talent changes uh, basically feed into the skeleton walk uh, agnum shard ability so he used to be able to actually uh, kind of get a skeleton when he exited his skeleton walk and now instead it is part of his uh, agnum's shard so he's got to pay money for it now he get two he gets two burning army skeletons which is great so uh, it's definitely worth investing because Clinks is all about taking en enemies unaware and those skeletons are a big part of that so this is a very good ability it kind of weakens him in the laning stage it makes him have to pay for his his ability to gank right which is which is fine I think we needed to slow down Clinks a bit so Clinks was one of those heroes that could really tear up a relatively uh, beginner friendly game so Clinks getting some retooling in order to help him be uh, a little more friendly to beginners a little less punishing but also still a, a damn good hero as he gets his Agnum's shard ability Crystal Maiden seeing some minor adjustments here now this these changes here aren't like buffs or nerfs necessarily um you know at the end of the day basically what they're doing is they're normalizing the opportunity for damage to be done via abilities so frostbite's damage interval instead of being 0.7 which is kind of bizarre have a 0.25 so it ticks a little more rapidly it's the same overall damage but it ticks in kind of a different state there which is neat because it might provide an opportunity for like you know it impacts it, it impacts the game in a very interesting way because um you know having quicker uh, damage kind of damage intervals might impact 
the way you know a dazzle saves his uh, his ally from sh with a shallow grave if they're under the effect of frostbite. So normalizing the damage intervals was kind of important from that standpoint. But bah, who cares? Okay. But uh, as a beginning player, you're really probably interested in the shard ability. What it does is, first of all, it, it decreases the uh, cooldown of Frostbite by one second, which doesn't sound significant, but Frostbite becomes suddenly spammable um, by that point, so you can use it multiple times a fight. It becomes a, a real, like, spammable move that can really impact. Remember, it also, Frostbite disarms. Okay, it has a natural disarm effect, so that is very significant in uh, team fights as well. Being able to cast it uh, multiple times in a team fight, and uh, it also allows you to cast on itself, as we're going to see here, which reduces incoming damage by seventy percent and allows basically, um, you know, <laughs> allows casting frostbite while channeling as long as long as a valid target's in range. So it allows her to TP. Watch, she starts to TP. She casts frostbite, which basically prevents them from attacking back, which allows her to complete the TP. So again, frostbite disarms. This is important. I, this, at first glance, might be confusing to a new player. But let me explain what's happening here so that you kind of have a firm understanding of how this can be used if you're new to the game. So you're taking a lot of damage here. You frostbite. You take reduced damage here. But now what happens is you want to get away. You're like, I'm going to die. You start TPing, but you can still cross cast frostbite in order to ensure you get away. Because it applies a disarm effect, if someone else is doing damage to you, Suddenly, they have to just sit there and watch you TP away. So, a very interesting effect by one of my favorite heroes in the game. Dazzle, getting some significant reworks here. First of all, much more beginner-friendly hero. Dazzle's one of those heroes that uh, is kind of hard to recommend at times. Like, Disruptor and Dazzle kind of fit the same scope, where it's like, yes, beginners can utilize their abilities relatively straightforward, but, like, when you mess up, like playing Dazzle, where you mess up playing Disruptor, it becomes very obvious. And and um, it can be very punishing to your team as a new player. Like your mistakes hurt more as a Dazzle. Your mistakes hurt more as a Disruptor. So seeing these changes to Dazzle really makes me happy. It's it, it's like it's like Do uh, the Dota development team said, okay, hold on. This is a hero we recommend to new players, and it's hard to pull some of these skills off. Let's make it a little more uh, straightforward. So first of all, Shallow Grave is the key thing. What Shallow Grave does is it allows your teammates to basically and yourself to survive death for a given. It basically provides uh, you know uh, protection from death. Uh, it's uh, it, it's it can be pierced by things like Axe. So for instance, Axe Culling Blade can go through it, but let's not talk about that right now. Basically, Shallow Grave duration rescales from 5 seconds straight up to 4, so it's a little uh, less duration at uh, earlier levels, to 5.5, so it's a little better later in the game. That's important, because in the laning stage, you might just need to be able to get away at the, the, <laughs> the later start part, parts of the game. You really want to keep your team alive. Uh, shallow Grave cooldown reduced, so you can use it more frequently, which is great. Uh, particularly, so you have 1 second less duration, but you're able to cast it more frequently at level 1. It ultimately becomes the same at the end, but at level 1, it's a very significant change. So, it makes Dazzle a little more Im impactful in the laning stage. Shallow Grave, this is the big one. The cast range has been increased from 550. 50 at level 1 to 700 at level 1. This makes it so that uh, you're much better leaner, you're able to uh, much able, uh, much better predict, um, you know, and uh, react to an ally or yourself being near death. Well, not so much yourself, because what do you need the cast range for? But the additional cast range really, really helps him in the laning stage, because uh, he has been traditionally a really weak laner. So this is fantastic. This is a big, this is a usability change. This makes it much more friendlier for beginning players, because 550 doesn't sound like it's tight, but, you know, it's, it's tight enough that that can be, that's, uh, you know... It, it, you can just be far enough from casting the Shallow Grave just for your teammate just to die right in front of you. And of course, and then the chat begins. Um, the chat, the talent rework is pretty neat as well. And the nice thing about this talent rework is we got the attack speed. Can Dazzle become an auto attacker? Hmm. Very interesting. Very interesting. And especially when you take a look at what bad Juju becomes. Um, it launches an attack at the three closest enemies within heroes every time you cast an ability, and that's pretty awesome with uh, Dazzle because he can cast abilities very frequently. So suddenly, if you get additional attack speed and you got the bad juju upgrade with the shard ability, are you are you becoming an auto attacker, an armor reducing auto attacker? Hmm, very interesting. Dazzle, I gotta play some Dazzle soon. But the scepter rework is actually fantastic as well. I think this is a, this is a fantastic buff. Um, Shadow wave dispels allies, increases healing by sixty, and increases. Damage damage by 80 that's huge shadow wave does a lot of damage and a lot of healing but the dispel is very significant i think that a lot of relatively new players they they don't 
pay attention to the quality and the impact that dispelling heroes can have. Like, um, you know, having dispels on your team can make the difference between winning and losing significant team fights. If, uh, you know, Crystal Maiden is doing Crystal Novas in team fights and you shadow wave your allies and dispel them from that attack slow and the movement slow, that is a lot of attack speed that you're saving them, right? So Dazzle being reworked, I love it. Much more beginner friendly. Can't wait to see him in lane. Now I hinted before at Disruptor being one of those heroes that beginners tend to kind of gravitate to and end up getting punished with. Nothing too much has changed here. We do get a minor cooldown uh, increase here, or reduction I should say. Kinetic uh, field cooldown uh, increased uh, to 3 seconds over 2 at level 10, which is fantastic. We really needed that. Um, and also, Thunderstrike getting an Anzim Shard ability so you can cast it on allies, which gives them like this pulse of movement speed and attack speed while also increasing the area of effect. A really neat ability increases his overall damage uh, capabilities and perhaps staying power later in the game. But overall, Disruptor still a very interesting hero. Uh, you know, you you got to basically uh, you know glimpse into that sweet kinetic field. Uh, it's a good, very good combo to pull off, but it's one that's going to take a lot of practice. But overall, a very interesting change. I do like the Thunder uh, Strike up upgrade. Whether or not it actually has a major impact on the game remains to be seen, but still an interesting change nonetheless. Who calls the Dragon Knight? Nobody. No one called the Dragon Knight. This guy needed buffs and he needed them bad. And he got buffs across the board here. Breathe Fire, reduction in mana cost, allowing him to lane a little more efficient, uh, efficiently. Dragon Tail, increase in damage, like a very significant increase in damage. Fantastic, right? Dragon Tail is not mainly known for its damage. It's a nice little bonus to have additional damage, but uh, it's the longest, one of the longest single stuns in the game. Elder Dragon Splash Radius Increase. So now he's doing more damage in Dragon Form with the Splash. A straight up buff to Talent Increase in Health there, making him a little more tanky. And this item Shard ability is a beauty! So, basically, when you're in Dragon Form, you get the Fireball ability. It ignites a 450 AoE, which is a pretty, like, it's basically the width of a lane, dealing 80 damage per second to enemies. And that's a lot of damage. 80 damage per second is nothing. Nothing to sneeze at. That is a very significant amount of damage there. Um, awesome, awesome uh, ability here. If you're building Dragon Knight, you are definitely building the Fireball Aghanim Shard ability. I think we're going to see a lot of Dragon Knight. Do we see him mid? Do we see him safe? Do we see him off? That's the thing. He's another very durable, interesting hero. Um, and with this increase in health, the increase uh, breathing fire uh, reduction and cooldown, something like that, he might be a very, very formidable hero in this new patch. Look forward to seeing him. Uh, Drow Ranger, another relatively uh, common hero in beginner circles. Uh, being adjusted quite a bit here. Uh, some minor nerfs here, realistically. But uh, that's probably to account for the Frost Arrows Aghanim's Shard ability. So you're getting reduction in damage, which makes her a little uh, a little weaker in lane. Frost Arrows uh, damage, uh, sorry, slow, reduced. That's not a crazy amount. It's not like, it, it's it's an adjustment. If anything, it's more of a normalization than a nerf. Uh, but it is still, you know, a little bit weaker. Um, the agility bonus rescaled, so it is slightly weaker. So this makes it, like, so she's a, she starts a little weaker here. So she still becomes the incredible carry that you expect her to. But she's not as punishing to lane against, which is important to understand. Because look, the, the marksmanship damage bonus reduced. And again, the big ones are the level 6 ones, right? So at level 6, you're seeing some reductions here. So at level 6, she's seeing less of a power spike. And, um, you know, the silence duration getting nerfed to gust cooldown. I mean, of course, the gust cooldown is still good, but the silence duration was really punishing. So, um, you know, understood why they'd make that change. The Agnum Shard ability, so Frost Arrows apply Hypothermia stack. So this is pretty interesting as well because, again, so they had to make adjustments here because the Hypothermia is pretty interesting because especially as she scales well with attack speed and agility, she can stack this pretty fast. And if the hero dies, which is pretty common against the Drow Ranger carry, they burst and deal 60 damage per stack and 25 slow uh, in a major radius around her. So it's quite a bit of damage. As you can see, she basically wipes all these uh, melee creeps here. So... Uh, it's, a, it's not an insignificant amount of damage, so a very interesting uh, change to Drow Ranger. A little weaker in stage, uh, in uh, the laning stage, but perhaps even a stronger carry later in the game. Faceless Void, a very common safe lane hero in all MMRs, has been retooled. Base agility reduction there. Um, you're also seeing a time lock bonus damage reduction. So basically this makes him weaker in lane, a little easier to punish in the laning stage uh, because the time lock bonus was basically, it could be punishing. It's not a crazy amount, uh, but uh, he's a little uh, less powerful in lane. He's also getting a reduction in time lock range, which makes him a little more susceptible to getting, uh, getting killed later in the game because he, he's a very snowball centric 
carry. He can. You, you've all been in games where there's a faceless void that nobody can kill, right? Uh, and also, so the Aghanim Shard ability, which kind of feeds into the ability not to kill faceless void, allows him to recast Time Walk uh, 1.5 seconds after landing, but his health and uh, his health is not impacted. But um, still, it allows him to be a little more slippery. I actually don't think this is very good, honestly. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. What do I know? I'm not a, I'm not a pro Faceless Void player. I think this is one of the, the least uh, overwhelming, one of the more underwhelming Aghanim Shard abilities. But overall, Faceless Void slightly weaker in lane. And the next two heroes we'll be talking about are Chikiro and Juggernaut. Two very beginner-friendly heroes that you see very frequently in lower MMR games and in all MMR, ga MMR games, to be honest with you. So first of all, Chikiro getting a buff here. The level... Level 15 talent uh, gets an increase in uh, re reduction for Ice Path, which is absolutely fantastic. One of Jakiro's go-to moves. And then you get the Aghanim's Shard ability, which is Liquid Frost, which is an auto-cast possible ability, which allows the Frost Head to finally get in on the action, slowing enemies by 30% and dealing additional damage and max health per second for four seconds. It's actually a pretty significant amount of damage. And it's important that if you're against a very tanky lineup, like if you're against axes and bristlebacks and all those types of things, then that 2.5% that max health, that actually scales pretty well uh, in the late game because percentage-based damage is percentage-based damage. It doesn't matter how much health they have, it's just going to do more damage if they have more health and if they at our higher levels. So a very interesting change for Jakaro. Uh, perhaps keeps them a little more relevant in the later game. Now, Juggernaut, these are some exciting changes. Uh, Juggernaut here, I absolutely love these changes. And anyone who played Underlords, this is a good shout out for you because this is basically what Juggernaut did in Underlords. They stole this from Underlords. But basically what happened is, so Juggernaut getting his Blade Fury Radius increased, which is great, right? Why not take it? Not a significant increase, but hey, it's an increase. But they had to do that because they adjusted his talents. So now he no longer at level 15 can get the uh, the Blade Fury movement speed, which is great because it allows him to keep the enemy units in the Blade Fury radius. Uh, but rather, it gives him the Healing Ward cooldown. So obviously they're trying to encourage the actual use of the Healing Ward, which is kind of just the thing that chases Juggernaut around where people just kind of ignore it. Um... It also increases Blade Fury DPS. So Blade Fury is getting significant buffs here. But also, look at this Agnum Shard. I absolutely love this. Basically, it increases his Blade Fury... Uh Blade Fury movement speed by 100, so what the uh, the talent did before, right? And it also allows him to attack near nearby enemies once per second. Okay, it's not it's not like his normal auto attack speed, like which can be very fast because he's obviously an agility based hero. It's once per second, which is fantastic because if he has a you know. If he's doing a ton of damage late in the game, it allows him to scale very well in the late game. Because the problem for Juggernaut, and you probably realize this if you've played lots of Juggernaut, was that he would basically gain a whole ton of damage potential, right? He'd gain his Battle Fury, he'd get all his items, and then when he Blade Furied, like, all his auto attack damage just disappeared. And he was completely reliant on Blade Furying to either, like, kind of avoid damage from magic, or to, like, TP out, or whatever. He couldn't actually use it as like a DPS utility. And now they've changed that because now he can still auto attack while he's in Blade Fury. So a major change for late game Juggernaut, which I, if anything makes him way scarier. I, I, see, I see these as buffs, honestly, um, which can be scary because we've all been in games where Juggernaut just goes absolutely out of control. And I think that this Blade Fury change really makes him a bona fide position one top tier hero. Now we've got a string of beginner centric heroes here that are very common in uh, you know, new player games and and in uh, lower MMR games, let's talk about Lich, Lifestealer, and we're going to talk about Lena and Lion as well. Now, these four are very common in all MMR brackets, but particularly those in the lower MMRs. Now, Lich has basically had a buff to the Frost Nova AoE, which is great, but look at this. I, I love this. This is one of my favorite new abilities. Now, I haven't had a chance to test it yet, but like just, just on pure principle, I absolutely love this. Ice Spire creates a icicle for 15 seconds, which slows enemies by 20% within 500 range, which isn't a small, like, that's a pretty big little range there. It, it also allows the Chain Frost to bounce off it if there's no enemies in range, which allows him to gank a little more effectively uh, if there's no enemies in range. Um, and it also can be, uh, Frost Shield can be cast on it, and it has 300 health, so if you want to kill it, you got to hit it several times. Um... Which is great. I think these are great changes to Lich. I like. I really like Ice Spire. I think this is really fantastic. A really unique opportunity to make Lich a little more of a uh, more of a roamer. I think to be able to catch a few heroes off guard. Now, Life Stealer here. Life Stealer has always been a hero that has kind of been on the fringes of like 
kind of having some complex mechanics, but also being relatively beginner friendly. And um, so last hitting is going to be a little harder here because his base attack speed has been reduced, but he still has a very fast attack animation. So last hitting on Lifestealer feels a lot easier than say someone on like someone like Spectre who actually had this exact thing nerfed even further. But Lifestealer still has a pretty good attack rate here. He also has an increase in uh, in feasting, which allows him to you know counter high HP lineups a little more effectively. But here's the thing, he gets a new ability soon, he no longer has open wounds, instead he gets Ghoul Frenzy, which basically allows him to passively, so it's not an active ability, so passive abilities tend to favor new players, because it's just one less thing you have to worry about, so passively increasing his, uh, his attack speed, while also allowing him to slow enemy units so he can attack them more, it's a great change, I love this change. Uh, the mana cost for Rage has been increased, which it had to happen, because... Mana, uh, like Rage is just, it's, it's a fantastic ability, it's basically spell immunity, it's basically a free BKB for him, um, and uh, an increased in uh, infest mana cost, which is appropriate as well. And uh, here's the thing as well, so talent rework, uh, Scepter rework, he can actually infest enemy heroes and attack them from inside, which is pretty interesting, right? And he also, uh, he also does uh, some self-healing in there as well. Uh, but the thing is, the key change here is that once you get the, uh, the Aghanim Shard ability, you actually get open wounds back. So he effectively, I like this because it scales with complexity. If you're a new player and like you're just trying to learn and trying to get better, you know, you can, this is, I mean, you should be getting this, but... If you're just struggling with the button presses, right? Um, this is great because what you can do then is uh, as you become more comfortable with the fundamentals of Lifestealer, you add the next ability, which is Open Wounds, which allows him to basically create... Um, it slows the enemy unit, allows your whole team to heal off them. It's a great ability, and it works perfectly with someone who steals life. So Lifestealer, I think, is back. This is great. I love this. I love this, these changes. I think it's very, again, very beginner-centric, and it makes perfect sense. It makes the hero much more... Uh, much more effective. I, I I love these changes. They're great changes. Nalina, talking about great changes. This is scary. Wow, Laguna Blade having a uh, increased cast range and also becomes ground targeted, traveling its full length and hitting everyone along the path. That is terrifying. That is like, it's like Echo Slam levels, like terror, like being terrifying. Like if everyone's bunched up and they're too close together. Oh man, Lena is gonna punish them. She's weaker, uh, she's weaker in lane though. So there's there's a couple things here. So Lena, so she has very far attack range, which makes her good for mid and off lane. But now she has a, uh, the top end of her damage has been reduced, which makes her a little weaker in lane for harass and last hitting. The base armor reduces her ability to trade. Uh, she does get increased uh, later on, so she can actually carry a little better later in the game with her uh, her fiery soul. Um, the uh, increase on light strike array kind of hurts, right? But it's not really spammable. And, like I don't know if this really impacts you too much because, like, yeah, it was seven seven seconds earlier, but like you didn't have the mana to really cast it that frequently at level one anyway. Uh, but the Laguna, Laguna Blade mana cost reduction is pretty significant, especially at level six here, where like you don't, you might not have, you know, your your the items in play yet to have a massive mana pool. That's perhaps where this comes back into play here. We have a, you know, you're not able to spam this ability anymore. But you do have an increased amount of damage to Life Strike Array, array to come together with the. Uh, the increase in uh, cooldown, um, increased in health, which is pretty good, and of course, an increase in the fiery hole, uh, fiery soul. Sorry, damage capability. But this overall is a very interesting ability. Uh, I really like this. I'd love to test this. Lena can become very terrifying. Now here's Lion. Lion, a very interesting hero as well. Very often picked by beginners, but also a hero that is has been pretty much absolute garbage. Um, honestly, Lion's been garbage lately. But now we're seeing some improvements here. So we're seeing an increase in agility, which makes him, you know, you get you get some increased armor, you get some uh, some uh, you know increased attack rate. So uh, you know he's a little he's just a little better in lane now, just a little better in lane. But he also gets an increase in the cast range of Earth Spike, which keeps him a little safer, allows him to trade better, allows him to initiate better. Uh, hex movement speed, so he, allow, he allows him to gank better. So basically, uh, the hex units move slower now, so you know they're they're a little more restricted. Mana drain now. So this is a big one, okay? So mana drain multi-target now searches for units within 300 of his cast range, not 400 radius around the target. So if there's someone beside him, right, right here, and he's casting, you know, the mana drain, he. Can can then mana drain over there as well as opposed to having a small radius around the target it's a radius around him this is a major change it allows mana drain to be much more of a like symbolic um 
ability. It's like, it's his trademark now. Mana Drain becomes his trademark, especially when you look at what is Agnum's shard ability. And I think this is great. It grants true sight over an enemy, which basically counters, uh, you know, invisible heroes. And it reduces their attack speed by 90. And that's fantastic, especially when you consider what, what this does now, right? So it's, uh, it's a really, really good ability. Uh, Mana Drain, I think, is like a lot of people see like Finger of Death as like his trademark ability, but Finger of Death has always been like really meh. Like to me, like I don't think it's actually as good. Like even if on cooldown, you hit it every single time, it really doesn't attribute that much extra damage by the end of the game. Like it just doesn't. But you can see what man like mana drain will completely disable a bristleback. He mana drain will counter many in this like invis heroes. Like it is a great ability. So you're gonna see a lot more lion harassing in lane. And now we're gonna talk about two heroes that have been synonymous with uh, new players and beginning players, and that is the Ogre Magi and the Omni Knight. Ogre Magi has been changed very significantly here because what you're seeing here is an inability to trade as effectively in lane. Base damage reduced by 2, increase the mana cost of Ignite, which is his primary uh, harass op uh, ability, and uh, although its first uh, damage instance does occur immediately, which is technically a buff, you're seeing a reduction in the Fire Blast mana cost, which is actually pretty good. Uh, 5 mana is pretty significant for an Ogre Magi as well, pretty dumb. And then you have Unrefined Fire ba Blast, which, uh, you know, basically uses 30% mana, so it increases, it's basically a buff to his Aghanim Scepter ability, right? And uh, Talon 5 here, so basically he gets the bash. This is huge. So at level 25, instead of getting bonus movement speed, he can now bash units for 1.5 seconds. That's pretty awesome. It's basically like a free uh, free basher for him. Why wouldn't you at level 25? You, you, you cast your, uh, you multicast your bloodlust, you jump in there and just start stunning guys. Why wouldn't you? Fire Shield's pretty interesting as well. The major thing that makes Fire Shield good here is the ability for it to multicast. Basically what it does is it creates a 70% damage absorbing for uh, three attacks, which is pretty important because if you're against like a PA and you absorb 70% of uh, like a Coupe de Gras, then like suddenly you're like, oh, sweet. Like that's it. That's huge, right? That's huge. So very scalable in the late game. The 25, 125 damage, whatever, you'll take it. Not that important. But uh, the major thing is it can be multicast, has good attack uh, range, and only a cooldown of 18 seconds. So uh, you can use it quite frequently. This is a really neat ability. I, If I'm playing Ogre Magi, I'm getting this shard because especially with the multi... And you want anything with multicast, man. You want anything with multi uh, multicast with this absolute beauty hero. I absolutely love him. Omni Knight, people have been begging for Omni Knight to get in uh, improved here. And instead he gets a nerf on Heavenly Grace. Oh, the humanity. The, the nerf on Heavenly Grace. But it's okay because Hammer, Hammer Purity is going to make up for it. Basically, it's an auto attack ability, which causes, so it has a six second cooldown, so his next auto attack deals bonus pure damage equal to 25 plus 150 of his base damage, healing him for the base amount, for, for the damage dealt, sorry. So, it allows him to have a little more sustain, encourages him to get in there and start a fight. Um, a pretty interesting ability. I'm gonna have to tr test this, like, in theory, this seems good, it gives him a little added sustain, but uh, I would have liked something a little more team-centric. But, uh, hey, it's better than nothing, I guess. Is it better than nothing? For 1400 gold? <laughs> I'm gonna have to test that. <laughs> Phantom Assassin, one of the marquee heroes of Dota 2, and one of the heroes that many beginners, especially those lear learning uh, position 1 and to carry, definitely lean towards, has seen some significant changes that ultimately, is it a... Mm, is it a nerf? I think she's nerfed a little bit, but I like this fan of knives ability and I'll talk about why and I'll we'll highlight this little thing the break for three seconds. That's important. But anyways, um, so blur fade time slightly improved, but the blur evasion has been reduced. This will make it so that, uh, you know, she has a little less uh, maneuverability, a little less hard, uh, more of a harder time in lane. And, uh, you know, overall it is a nerf to blur, but Hey, what are you going to do? You're also seeing a nerf to the, uh, the, the, the talent on level 10, that 175 damage was really valuable at that, uh, that uh, talent level there. The, you're seeing a reduction in Phantom Strike cast range from 350 to 300. Again, doesn't sound like a lot, but it is, right? It reduces Phantom's Assassin's ability to kind of be highly mobile, right? Uh, which is one of her strongest points, because uh, especially when you get to level 25, instead of getting a 100% crit damage, which is basically a one-shot for most heroes, she gets an increase of 75% for Coupe de, uh, Coupe de Gras. I said Coupe de Gras before, but it's Coupe de Grace. Uh, I don't even know how to say this, bro. I don't know. I'm not French. But anyways, so basically, um, you know, that's a major change because this this right here was what made 
PA so punishing. Like the literally guys getting one shotted by a level twenty eight PA late in the game. <laughs> like supports just like would CPA and just be dead, right? So this this reduces that impact quite a bit. But Phantom Knives is cool. I like Phantom Knives. So what it does, it creates kind of like an interesting team fight mechanic because you you jump in with Phantom Strike. And then with 550 AoE, which is not insignificant, it's basically the, the width of a lane, um, you deal 12% of max health. That's Listen, anytime you're doing percentage-based damage, that's neat, okay? I like that. I like that personally. But it's the break. You're basically disabling passives there. So you, you're, you're, you're disabling, disabling, like, you know, uh, important passives. Like, uh, well, it was just showing it. Like, these heroes, they lose their passives, right? Like, the you, you lose the Kraken shell. You, you lose the bristle back. You lose the... Uh, the, uh, the counter helix, like all these things get disabled and suddenly PA is a little safer. So you get this reduction in, in blur, but you get an increase in with break for three seconds, which is not insignificant. So a really interesting retooling. I feel like she's been nerfed overall. Like this is the big nerf right here. This is the big, oh, PA got to 25. Now she just deletes everyone in two shots to just like, okay, PA's 25. We're still scared of her, but she's not just going to straight up delete people. Overall, still a very good hero. One that I'm sure a lot of you guys can have a lot of fun with in position one safe lane. All right, we got to talk about Pudge. Pudge is not a hero that I would recommend you playing as a beginner, but hey, he's one of the, like, he's a, literally one of the most iconic heroes in Dota. And at the end of the day, Pudge is an absolute beauty. And uh, he is known for being a horrible laner. And you see Pudge in lane, he's like, this guy's useless. If he, if he can't pull you with a hook, then he's basically just a waste of space. And now what we can do here is Pudge increase base damage. That allows him to trade a little better. Not a big deal. The big deal is the increase in the base armor. He has one of the lowest armor uh, tallies in the game, and this increase in base armor gives him a little more ability to trade. So now you increase the damage and the armor. Suddenly, he's a little more formidable in lane. Uh, you're getting some minor tooling to his agility and his strength. Uh, minor changes to his uh Flesh Heap Magic Resistance. This is actually better, especially since you're seeing an additional 4% on level 1. That's going to give him the opportunity to be a little more uh, a little more tanky in the earlier parts of the game, especially against Magic Heavy lineups. Some minor changes here. I do like it. Uh, these are overall buffs, I think, because look at this. Look at the meat hook damage on this guy. You're basically taking the, the level... You're more or less taking the level 15 talent and bringing it to level 10, which is fantastic, and increasing the meat hook damage, which I know you, you all love. It. Everyone's going to take it because they love meat hooking. And uh, the nice thing is, is you got the increase in Rot Slow at level 10. You're getting a Scepter, so he increases Rot Radius by 200, increases his damage, and reduces health regeneration by affected enemies by 25%. This is pretty significant. So now he becomes this AoE-like damage dealer, which is great because if he initiates with a hook and then kind of creates his Rot, uh, if people jump on to try and save their position 1 hero that just got hooked, then they're just going to get eaten apart by Rot, which is pretty cool. And uh, Dismember with the uh, Agnum Shard ability allows him to swallow allies to heal them. It's actually pretty neat. It's pretty neat, right? So, anyways, Pudge has been greatly retooled here. I actually like the changes. I hate, I hate Pudge. I hate playing against Pudge. Uh, but, uh, but hey, he's. I think he's better. He's in a better place. These are really significant buffs here for literally the most popular hero in Dota. So, if you uh, hate seeing Pudge in matches, uh, I have bad news for you. You're going to see him a lot more, and he's going to be better. <laughs> Shadow Shaman, one of the supports that uh, beginning players, new players really gravitate to. And he has been buffed. Hell yes. Shadow Shaman. Mass server war damage increased. I'll take that all day long. But here's the, the beautiful thing about this. It's his Agnum Shard. I love this. I think this is one of the best ones. It goes together with the increase in damage, by the way. But I'm going to tell you right now. I absolutely love this Agnum Shard ability. Basically, it improves shackles. Creates four Serpent Wards on that attack the target while you channel. That's awesome. Not to mention the increase in shackle range. Many people built Aether Lens just for an increased shackle range. And now you get it with the Agnum uh, Shard ability. This is one of the best Agnum Shard abilities that I see. And I love it. I absolutely love this. It makes um, the shackles that much more effective. It allows the uh, the Shadow Shum to actually play much more of a ganking role. Which is pretty awesome. This is a great change. And if uh, you're a Shadow Shaman player, this is an absolute beauty. And if you're a new player and you want to play position 5 support, Shadow Shaman has now risen to the top. As, to, as for, uh, you know, a hero that you definitely got to try because uh, these are some great, fantastic buffs. All right, we got to talk about two heroes that are, once again, very common in lower MOR games and in beginner-friendly games. And we're talking about Sniper and Spectre. Both have been changed. Now, here's what's important. Um, Sniper? 
kind of got buffed. A lot of people don't realize this, but uh, Sniper actually has a brutal win rate. It's actually like one of the heroes that's picked the most and loses the most. Uh, people tend to think like, oh, Sniper's great. And then like literally when you have a bad Sniper, oh man, the game's just basically a throw. So he's received some minor tooling. Uh, he's going to have increased health with the uh, the increased uh, strength gain. Uh, slightly less carry efficient because of the reduction in agility gain, but I I don't think that's very significant based on the items he uh, he builds. He also gets concussive grenade, which knocks units back, disarming them for three seconds and slowing them by fifty percent. This is actually pretty good because the whole thing about sniper is you got to jump on top of them and kill them, and this will allow him to have a little bit of added survivability. So uh, you might see Sniper back in some pro games and high MMR. Like, really, Sniper is kind of like a really low MMR hero, like where you see very frequently in, like, Crusader Down, uh, not very commonly in Divine and Up. And um, there's a reason for that. Now, that does this change things? Time will tell. Very interesting changes. Spectre, I feel bad. I feel bad for our, uh, our psychotic phantom assassin here. So Spectre has had their base attack speed reduced from 190, so that makes last hitting a little more difficult, for sure. Dispersion nerfed at the high end there, that sucks because Dispersion is very valuable. It's only 2%, but still, hey, 2% 2%. Dispersion getting rescaled, so that's a nerf in the late game. This is a nerf in the laning stage. This is punishing in the laning stage. Increase in Spectre dag uh, Dagger cost and Spectre Dagger cooldown reduces her ability to get away from ganks and also to uh, secure ganks as well so she's a little more vulnerable in lane and uh you know shadow step susceptibility now cast on uh, that's whatever so let's talk about the agnum shard ability here that's fine uh dispersion upgraded so now uh you can activate dispersion to haunt the last hero that attacked you with an illusion which is cool which is cool uh, do i think it's great no honestly i don't think it is that great but uh for five seconds i mean the illusion, if, if you're building radiances and stuff like that and whatever, whatever the new Spectre build is going to be, you have to also bear in mind that the uh, the increased cost for Blade Mail is a nerf to Spectre who was using Blade Mail to farm more effectively. So uh, you're seeing a lot of nerfs to Spectre, unfortunately. So uh, this, this is huge, especially for newer players, because it's going to make her feel more sluggish and lean and make last hitting a little harder, especially compared to that life stealer I was talking about earlier. Now I know if you've been playing the game lately, you've been so annoyed with Sven because Sven has been absolutely stomping everybody with this, that storm hammer. And um, but here's the thing: Sven just got nerfed pretty hard, super nerfed. Is he even viable anyway? I think they kind of killed Sven a bit. Um, so they took down 30% of his god strength, which is pretty huge at later levels. So we can't carry as hard. Uh, Stormhammer Scepter no longer dis uh, apply attacks on impact. So when he gets his Agnum Scepter, which is basically a vital you know, core item for Sven, he no longer stuns and attacks right away, which is kind of like a major DPS increase. He doesn't do that anymore. So he has to attack and then back, then then actually do his swing. So it's a it's a reduction in his overall DPS. Um, he's no longer able to get the the crazy attack range from his scepter bonus, which was uh you know it's a reduction of 150 range. It's pretty significant. And level 15 talent no longer dispelling enemy enemies. That is huge because the dispel like here's the enraged Ursa Stormhammer dispelling him. That dispel was huge when you add into the range and the instant attack like that. Agnum Scepter was just so devastating. Once Sven got his Agnum Scepter, he basically became an absolute monster. So basically, if you want that dispel back, you got to pay 50, uh, 1400 gold for it with the shard. And you know what? It might actually be worth it because it is. Super good, but Sven has been nerfed. He's been bonked with the Storm Nerf Hammer and now should be a little more dialed in in your beginner friendly game. Biggest tree in the league getting adjusted here as uh, Tree and Protector gets overgrowth that allows him to interrupt targets again. That's actually a straight up buff. So if you have like a win, uh, sorry, a Crystal Maiden doing her alt. You can overgrowth into the alt and actually interrupt casting, which is great. Um, Nature's Guys now creates a situation where if you are in Nature's Guys and you come out of it, you actually do additional damage and root them for one second, which is awesome because if you're next to a tree, it lasts an additional second. So rooting and doing a lot of damage there is truly fantastic. So an interesting change for Treant protector one of my favorite off lane supports now ursa is a position one carry that has a lot of opportunity especially in for newer players to really create a situation where you can really start killing the opponents really early in the game he's one of the scariest heroes in the laning stage of the game does he fall off later maybe a little bit but if you can farm him early enough then he becomes an absolute monster and he's seeing buffs across the board overpower cooldown reduced overpower mana cost reduced 
earth shock slow increased health increased and fury swipes every six uh, fury swipe on the single target gets uh, he gets in range for one second I actually don't think this is that great, but I'm not a core Ursa player. Um, so, uh, he basically gets uh, on his sixth attack. He gets basically gets additional damage and he's in rage, which is cool. Uh, remember with Ursa, this all adds up to being able to maybe take Roshan a little faster, but, um, by, by 20 minutes, you should have already taken Roshan as Ursa, Ursa, you should sneak him in. I don't know about this. I'll have to test it. I think this might be a little weak, but, uh, Hey, what do I know? I'm not an Ursa main, but, uh, that being said, like with attack, he scales very rapidly with agility and attack speed. So maybe this is actually better than I'm giving it credit uh, credit for because, especially with Fury, uh, Fury Swipes, you know what, this might actually be good the more I think about it. I think I'm going to have to test this. Ursa, an interesting hero in the post-patch meta. All right, and the last two heroes that we'll be speaking about in this video is Witch Doctor and Wraith King. Witch Doctor, no changes other than the Voodoo Switcheroo, which is my favorite name of all the abilities. It allows Witch Doctor to turn into the Death Ward? And basically, for two seconds, Death Ward has a little less attack speed, but you're hidden and invulnerable, so it allows him to kind of, like, stay alive in a team fight. So a very interesting change here. Uh, not, not too crazy, but Witch Doctor is one of those supports that can, like, do a ton of damage. Uh, often use this position 5 and 4, and uh, as a 4, honestly, Witch Doctor can just delete people with Maledict into Death Ward. So very interesting. And Wraith King is a very beginner-friendly... Um, uh, beginner friendly hero here and basically what you're getting here is the removal of mortal strike it's now a passive cooldown critical strike ability which again is much more beginner centric vampiric aura now is a percentage based lifesteal for himself only and it summons you can activate it to summon skeletons so again it's a little more beginner friendly in the way that the, his abilities work um, you're also seeing an upgrade to reincarnation which allows it to not have mana cost and spawn skeletons this is maybe not that great, but I think the overall changes to him makes him a little more approachable as a uh, beginner-friendly uh, carry and offlaner. Oh, I should talk about Zeus. Why wouldn't I talk about Zeus? Zeus is a very beginner-friendly uh, mid laner here. Zeus, Thunder God's Wrath. Mana cost increase, which needed to happen. It was too so people used Zeus in mid lane because they wanted him to get to level six very level six very quickly and then punish everyone around him. Thunder God's Wrath allows him to basically uh, you know kill anyone globally and increase mana cost and increase cooldown is probably necessary to kind of tone him in in the laning stages of the game. Um, reduction in uh, mana regen, which sucks. But uh, what are you going to do? But listen to this. This level 20 increase in Thunder God's Wrath damage allows that ultimate ability to be a little more relevant in the late game. Because 600 damage is a little scarier than 500 damage, of course, by a factor of 100 damage, Alex. And um, there you go. And again, so the uh, the reduction in Arc Lightning damage here, which is a bit of a nerf. But Static Field getting upgraded as well. And it gives him this little Heavenly Jump ability, which is pretty neat. Is this a Is this a meme? I don't know if this is actually good or not, honestly. Um, I have to. It's one of those like uh, set, those Agnum Shard abilities. Is like, um, this might actually be good, but it might actually be pure stupidity. I'm not sure, and I think I actually got to test it in a ranked game or something. But um, a really interesting uh, opportunity here, basically doing static field damage to them and uh, slowing their movement speed. It allows them to escape. I'll tell you that it makes them a little more shifty. Um, so that's pretty neat. Anyways, guys, that is the video. The next video, we're going to be talking about the items. It should be up here on the screen. Uh, we're going to be talking about the items in good detail. Thank you so much for watching, and a very special thank you to all of our wonderful subscribers. Take care, everyone, and we'll catch you in the next video.